to another show of this week. In our first story this week, President of South Sudan, Salva Kiir, appoints opposition leader Riek Masha as first vice president and Wani Iga as vice president. Sunny Martin has the following report. Vice President James Waniga is appealing to opposition leader Riek Machar to return to Juba to allow the full implementation of the peace agreement. Iga was sworn into office by Chief Justice Chan Red Madud in the presence of President Salva Kiir. Speaking after taking oath, Waniga said Machar should come back to Juba and assume his position as first vice president to discuss outstanding issues that are delaying the formation of the transitional government of national unity. I'm sure we can address all these issues, whether these are the 28 states, whether these are their boundaries, whether these are the economic issues. If you are apart, then you can never solve any problem. But once together and cohesively, uh, I believe we can remove any uh, impediment on our way to, to progress. At a press conference called on Friday afternoon, the President's Press Secretary Atenwe Katen read a press statement on behalf of the President. In the statement, President Salva Kiir asked opposition leader Oriak Machar to return to Juba within one week to allow the formation of the transitional government of national unity. I now call upon Dr. Oriak Machar to report to Juba immediately so that together we form the transitional government of national unity within seven days from today, Friday the 12th, February 2016. In the statement, President Kiir also asked the SPLM in opposition to submit the names of their nominees for the interim government, saying that the outstanding issues will be dealt with in Juba within the context of the interim government. Following up on this week, we travel to Bo with a special representative of the Secretary General to South Sudan. The head of the United Nations Mission in South Sudan, Margaret Ellen Lord, traveled to Bo on Tuesday, February 9th, where she met with UNMIS officials to take stock of the situation. So I decided to come on an ordinary day to spend time with each and every contingent to get a brief on what they're doing, to have them ask me questions and give them guidance on the work of the mission in South Sudan. She also visited UNMIS troops and police based in Bo. Among those she met were Korean engineers, Sri Lankan aviation and hospital, Ethiopian and Indian contingents, and Nepalese UN police. Peace should come to South Sudan. There are so many other challenges, and the people are suffering, and the economy is bad. So let us have peace in South Sudan. Let us work together to create a better future for the men and women, boys and girls of South Sudan. The UNMIS head congratulated the troops for their professionalism and dedication and welcomed the presence of women peacekeepers. In another part of the country, we meet Chinese engineers who are taking advantage of the dry season to build roads in South Sudan. Draped from head to toe in their full uniform and an hour before sunrise, these Chinese engineers in Kwajok have already taken their instructions for the day. They are part of an engineering team which has been working on a road renovation project along the stretch from Kwajok to Ajak Kwach. The 121-kilometer stretch passes through to Raleigh, located in the northwestern part of South Sudan. Um, presently, the road is in bad condition and affected with potholes, undulating surface, uh, lack of drainage, improper coverage. It requires immediately upgrade, repair and maintenance. Since mid-December 2015, these Chinese troops have deployed their heavy machinery 
and they have so far only managed two-thirds of the road renovation. They hope to finish this work before the start of the rains, within another month. This road, which allows for the provision of basic infrastructure, is part of work being done by the United Nations Mission in South Sudan to help boost main supply routes. We finish this road, we will accelerate the currencies of commodity. And we all hope this uh, road, it can be, it can help this place to be more pros prosperous. A senior United Nations official says that the road will benefit the community. So the road will also facilitate us in performing our tasks under the protection of civilians mandate. Having said that also, it's, it's right that this, the, the, the rehabilitation of the road will also assist with the economy of you know, the state in the sense that once people are able to traverse easily with their goods, it, it will facilitate you know, uh, an economic boom. The road linking Kwajok to Bentiu is one of the main supply routes for South Sudan, providing logistic support to Warap and unity areas in the northern part of the country. For these engineers, working in these remote areas is never easy. A combination of bad roads, hard ground and safety issues always affects their progress. They encounter numerous challenges on a daily basis, mostly mechanical, resulting in them having to wait on spare parts. As a result, they run behind schedules due to the time it takes to repair their machinery. Oftentimes, they also give a hand to food convoy truck drivers who get stuck on the bad roads and are in need of repairs for their own vehicles. Working alongside the Chinese engineering team are Kenyan Force Protection Troops who are tasked to ensure the security of the engineering team and their equipment. Every day we come out with them to the road sites when, as they continue trying to do the road repairs we are able to provide them with the all round protection so that they can be able to smoothly carry out their, their job. For local residents like Chol, who is also a truck driver, he believes that the road will assist in boosting the economy of the area and will allow easy travel for people. It is a big job done that can help us move with our vehicles freely since the raining season is approaching. Having taken advantage of the dry season and when the roadworks have been completed, it is expected that these Chinese troops will refocus their engineering works in support of other areas within the peacekeeping mandate. In times of crisis and emergencies, radio can be a lifeline. These are the words of the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who also says that communities can raise their voices and be heard. We feature Sabit William, who works for the United Nations Radio. My name is Sabit William, I'm a radio producer. I work for Radio Miraya. I host, now I host the morning show. I've been hosting the Miraya breakfast show for almost nine years now. When I first began in 2007, that's like nine years ago, it was a little difficult, you know, waking up at around 5 a.m. every morning. Uh, but eventually I, I, I get to, you know, get used to what is very, very important is that when you are doing something and you think that the thing is impacting people out there and you're causing a change, that itself is a motivation. Every morning I wake up coming to the radio knowing that I'm going out there to disseminate the right information, giving people what, um, you know, the, the kind of information that they needed to hear. And that kind of motivation, giving people the voice that, you know, they, they, they want to hear out their voice and speak 
to the whole nation. It's something that, you know, I feel good about it and that motivates me every morning. A very good morning and welcome to the program Miraya Breakfast Show. The morning of Wednesday. Today is February the 10th and the year is 2016. Some of our top stories today we will be talking to the ceasefire and transitional security arrangement monitoring mechanism committee. They are right here in Juba. The Mira Breakfast Show, literally, you cannot miss anything because we have like a whole package. We have news, we have information, we have entertainment, and within this, we have interaction with the listeners, which is one of the segments that I like so much, actually, is talking to the listeners, asking them, especially on their views on specific topics uh, in the country. May, it might be just like, you know, social topic, it might be political, it might be just like, you know, a, a very soft and human interest uh, discussion and yes the views that you hear every morning is absolutely you know makes up your day we get to know what the people really want and now this is where we take it now to the authorities we call them and bring them to the studio sometimes say look uh, these are the challenges that the ordinary citizens are going through and this is what the government could have done so um what are you doing you know most often you find that not all these leaders can be accessed by the ordinary citizens but the fact that actually we give the voice to them to ask the leaders a question, to also bring the answers from the leaders, uh, I think that is what we do. Radio Mariah, the voice of peace. You know, this is a very, very important um, period in South Sudan right now where during the two years conflict and we're trying to implement the peace agreement is being implemented and also supported by UNIMIS and, and Radio Miraya the voice of peace I think we are living into that we are trying as much as possible to do peace journalism which is more about advocating for peace and you know and letting the people just give messages of peace to the country and it, it's all about peace and basically that's what we're standing for now installing the attitude of peace to the people and that is what we're doing and I think we're getting there the message we have to spread out there is forgiveness forgiveness and reconciliation and that is the only way that we can heal our country and come back to peace and you know when you listen to the callers right now with all the bitterness that people had but with the advocacy that we put on radio on how people should love each other and spreading the message of his one south sudan we have 64 tribes but one thing for sure is people should believe in south sudan as a nation now the calls have completely changed i mean people call in and begin sending messages of peace i hope actually for peace in the country in south sudan and i hope for the best uh you know a country that put the interests of its citizens first. Radio Miraya is a family. It's a family of very well and dedicated journalists. Most of them just can go to the extra mile to bring the news to the citizens because they feel they are doing it for the country and for the citizens out there, especially the local journalists. I think we have a very, very hardworking and dedicated team in Radio Miraya. And it's about for the best of our listeners, everything that we do, we put it in, what are we doing it for? We're doing it for our listeners and we're doing it for uh, South Sudan. We end this week with our voices of peace. Until next time, have a great week. In the Sudan, it was hard. You come from Salam, from the Robat, from the Mujahid Gabalia. Mr. Nagdan, a tower, a land now, and in Sudan, I tower like a I come from there, inshallah, and the life that I am now, I am بتمنى إنه يعيد السلام في جنوب السودان يمكن أن طريق كرة خدم والسلام يمكن تيجي في جنوب السودان يعني. My dream for South Sudan is to make sure that the country goes well as we have got peace now to make a brighter future for me and even for those who will come later in future.